and I even put some wool here some sheep's wool that Katie gave me and then this is the sea the seaweed type yarn and the eyelash yarns that I put in but you see those on the video but I just thought I would show you what a difference thread painting makes just straight lines using the thread colors is all you need you don't want to cover the fabric you just want to accent the fabric all right now let's get back to the rest of it okay, I don't want to use this white thread here so I'm going to pull it until it turns dark again okay Just going back over, checking my beach, seeing what I've got, if it's looking okay. I had to come tear out a lot of the zigzag that I had last night. I just didn't like it. And I still am going to take out a little bit more. Okay. I still want to take out some of these dark threads. I don't like that. Outlining some of the cloud formations in this part of the sky. I'm going to do a little blending up in here. OK. 
Okay. I think another line of blending. And I just like to keep the line from being perfectly straight. got to do something with these. I think I really like this. Now this is something I'm real pleased. I like this slightly wave reminiscent feel right here. Let me, I want to do a little bit more background stitching here and then come get into that wave-like feeling. I really liked that. Okay. Now let's see how this looks. I really like how I did the waterline. I'm using a decorative swirl stitch. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Nope, I don't like it. So that I'll end up taking out. Don't like it. I will be and I will end up taking that out. 
I just don't like it. I think that, honestly, I think it's better to just stick with straight stitches when you're doing the thread painting. I think if I want to make it move around a little bit, that's fine, but nothing too regular. Yeah, my my stitching is is actually the better one. Okay. So I've got two spools of gray thread. Let me try this. And then when I sit down tonight, I'll pick out the black the black thread. I'm going to be doing some blending of colors. I took out the zigzag stitches down here and now I'm just taking gray thread and giving a little bit of definition and blending right down here. We're getting close to the end, and I do want to finish this. Okay, so now I'm going to do... I'm going to add some gray to the beach sand. Since in our North Carolina beaches, the sand is more of a gray than a tan. do back on this side. small zigzag stitch. I had to take out some of the sewing of this zigzag because it had gathered up the bottom of this fabric. So now I'm going to go over it with a much smaller zigzag and see and hold the fabric steady so it doesn't gather up. Okay, I think that's better. Yeah, I think that's much better. Okay, let me do some gray straight stitch. Go back to a straight stitch. Do some of my curly lines back over here.
need to put a little bit more of this over here. I'm going to keep it on a small zigzag. I noticed it just needed a little more darkness over here. This is the chance now to get it right. If I notice something, and that's the, the good thing. In fact, my daughter, who's a felt artist, we were talking about it today. And she said the best thing she finds is to walk away from something, give it a break, come back at it fresh. She said also, get your distance from it. Look at it again. You can get so hyper-focused on one little area that you think there's a problem when it's not, or you could be creating a problem, or maybe there's something else you need to do. Okay, let me make sure I still have... Nope, my bobbin's empty. I thought something... You can kind of tell when uh, it's not really sewing. Okay. Let me get a new bobbin in here. I always like to have my bobbins pre-wound because when I'm in the zone doing something artistic, I cannot stand to have to stop my progress and wind a bobbin. I feel like I lose something during that time. Tuck all the fibers in and give it a good zigzag. Okay. Then I'm going to take and cut off these threads. Another thing I want to talk to you about when I'm using this gray is when you look at things that go out a distance they tend to gray out um, as if you just coated them with a light watercolor gray and so I wanted to make sure that as I moved back adding more gray threads would help enhance that illusion of things just getting a little not necessarily paler but just a little more grayed so Okay, I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to just do a little bit, a touch more sewing here. I like making a bridge between all my colors and designs. see if I like that enough. I think that works. I'm going to do some straight stitching through it. So I find that with this one I'm not liking the zig seeing the zigzag stitch. So I find if I do straight do my zigzag to cover the space but then come back over it with a straight stitch. I like that better. I think I've done a pretty good job now of graying out the distances. 
leaving my colors much more bold up here. All right, I need to get a tan. I want to do a little more stitching here, right here. That's too white. All right, so I'm all done. I look around first to see if I'm all done with my gray thread. I mean, yes, my gray threads. Let me see. And then I'll come in here to the light area and do a little bit more stitching. Because if I leave it empty, it will make it look too unusual. All right. I think that's pretty good. All right. So I put some more stitching here. And I put more stitching in all of the lighter areas. All right. A little bit of the stitching along the front. As it comes towards you, it's going to look a little lighter. So I'm taking a two-dimensional object and trying to give it more of a three-dimensional feel. Okay. Gonna put take this light color while I've got it and do a little bit of stitching up in the lightest part of these clouds. I think I'm done then with the light color. I think I'm going to work with some of this copper colored metallic. I'm going to add some of this copper color. I think that'll give a nice touch of pizzazz. I'm going to go slowly. This is an older version of the metallics, and I don't think they take fast motion very well. That's exciting. Okay, let me do a little bit more up here. This is my favorite part. I feel like this is the icing on the cake. When you put the bling in there, you make it come alive. exciting. Let's see. Let's see how this looks. Ah, look. See the glitter? That's fabulous. Fabulous. All right. Put a little bit more.
I'm very pleased with this. Very nice. I'm going to go down here and put just a little bit down here. Okay, I just did some thread painting here and here with the gold metallic. I think it gives it a nice touch. All right, I'll put a little bit of it right along here, just a touch. And then I'll come through here, and now this is where we want to light up that sunset. Let's see how this is looking. I think that looks pretty spectacular, if I do say so. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit up here, and then we're going to go tackle the reflections in the water. And what we're thinking of is where is that sunset being reflected? So now, let's see. Along the way, cut some threads. Okay, let's come here and do a little bit where it's reflected on the water. There, just a touch. Remember what I said, it doesn't become special if you use it too much. It becomes less special. Just a little touch where I've gone behind, where I've gone before and added some of the reflected sun. Just a little bit. Okay. I've got... Okay. Alright, so put some here on the water. Let me put a little bit more right here. Okay, stop at that. 
Then Check this. It's really important to constantly check to see where you are. And I want to put some right here along the very edge where the contrast in the color is the greatest. Let's see. Okay. I'm come right back in here now and do a little more right here. a little bit more right here. Okay. And then right up close to here. Okay, let's see. Alright, I'm going to leave that there for right now and let me change some more colors. Okay, I noticed when I was sewing this, little holes opened up where I was sewing with the opalescent thread. It must be a thin thread and I'm using a big jeans needle. So I'm taking this container and I'm rubbing the back of the fabric to see if I can coax those thread holes to cover back over. I thought about using my fingernail, but I don't want to damage the thread. But I think that already looks better. Okay. I'm just going to go along the very white parts of this with the opalescent thread to give it a little brightness, little shine, not too much. We don't want to turn this into a glitter quilt. We're only enhancing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a glitter quilt, but that's not what this is about. This is just enhancing. Okay. I think that's enough for there. Now I think, ah, look at this. I see some more holes opening up. I'll have to rub over that, see if I can close those. You have, that's one thing you have to remember. We have done so much to this quilt and I needed to use a, a tougher needle to do the thread painting because, um, you know, when you're, when you're doing this much uh, back and forth sewing at a rapid speed but see how see how the holes are all opened up now I could change to a smaller needle but I'm lazy so I'm going to come in here on the back with this and I just happened to see this over in my little I was looking first for like a bone folder 
but I saw this and thought, you know what, I bet you this would work. And it's just coaxing the fibers to loosen up and fill in the hole. Let's see. Much better. Much better. All right. All right. And I probably could also use a little touch of water and a towel, just something to kind of... Okay. Now, where else? I think I'll use a little bit here where the waves, the frothy waves will be. Okay, now let me check and see how it is going. I think a little bit here for this really white part of sun shining through. A little bit along here, just a little touch. Okay, maybe just touch under here. Okay, I think that's plenty, and it's and it barely, you know, the light has to hit it just right. Barely shows. That's important. I love bling, but too much is just too much. I think I'd rather have none than too much. All right. I'm going to change threads. I'm now trying some gold holographic thread. I've got to go very slowly because it's not thread at all. It's just finely, finely slivered pieces of a sheet of the holograph film. All right, let me see what that looks like. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we only did four passes of that, but I think that was wise to be a little restrained. Let's look at it. I think I'll put just another pass or two on this side. I haven't put any over here yet, so let's go over here. I'm tickled this so, so well. I figured this would break in no time at all. All right, I think that's pretty good. And that's just for the most intense part. I'm not gonna put that anywhere else. All right, so now I'm gonna change threads again. I'll be right back. 
I'm now sewing some tulle onto the area of the wave. The, the white frothy part of the wave. And I'm sewing it on with invisible thread. I don't, and a zigzag stitch, because I don't want the thread to show. Let's see.